2019 brought challenges and changes, industry successes as well as setbacks for many due to weather. Through it all, the Council addressed the multiple economic challenges facing the U.S. cotton industry and worked to provide near-term assistance via market facilitation program trade assistance while aggressively tackling U.S. cotton's priorities, including advocating for disaster recovery assistance package legislation and working closely with the USDA and House and Senate Agriculture Committees on timely 2018 farm law implementation. During the FY20 budget process, the Council opposed cuts to crop insurance and worked to make sure cotton's priorities were maintained in USDA's FY20 budget. A major undertaking this year was the launch of the pilot of the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol Farm Level Sustainability Initiative. A multi-stakeholder board was assembled and the Council worked with NGOs, brands and retailers, and industry representatives to create the program, bolster producer participation, and educate the cotton supply chain about how the Trust Protocol will provide assurance of sustainable U.S. cotton for their sourcing needs. When we look across the gamut of uh, the issues the Council's dealing with, uh, we do anticipate it to be a busy year. We're going to continue to work for the industry's priorities. The National Cotton Council worked closely with Congress to advance a disaster assistance package to provide relief and recovery assistance for farmers affected by wildfires, Hurricanes Florence and Michael, and other natural disasters in 2018. There's a lot of interest in the implementation of the Supplemental Disaster Relief Bill. We announced FSA's WIP Plus program, uh, which provides payments to producers for natural disasters occurring in 2018 and 2019. Throughout the year, the Council also worked with USDA and Congress to include key improvements to WIP and state block grants as part of the disaster assistance implementation. The Council also worked to make sure cotton's priorities were maintained in USDA's FY20 budget and opposed cuts to crop insurance. The Council continued to monitor the FY20 appropriations process to ensure the industry's priorities were maintained. Congress later approved legislation that contained funds for these industry priorities. Council staff also participated in USDA's listening session for stakeholders to provide comments on issues and priorities for implementation of Farm Bill export promotion programs administered by the Foreign Agriculture Service. After the USDA initiated farm law implementation, the Council prepared and conducted four implementation educational webinars for its members. The sessions covered seed cotton ARC PLC election, 2019 and 2020 crop enrollment, marketing loan provisions, program eligibility provisions, and the economic adjustment assistance for textile mills. We produce the most and the best cotton in the world. Can you talk about uh, cotton being uh, mentioned in your purchase commitment discussions with the Chinese, please? In terms of the purchase commitment, absolutely cotton is a factor. It's something that China needs, has traditionally bought. The U.S. cotton industry continues to have a very good relationship with the China, China Cotton Association and the China National Textile and Apparel Council. And we believe that these relationships will be beneficial once the trade dispute is resolved. The Council conveyed its appreciation to the Trump administration for instituting a second round of trade mitigation payments. Council Chairman Mike Tate strongly encouraged the administration to engage in constructive dialogue with China to address unfair trade practices and barriers. The 16 billion in funds will help keep our cherished farms thriving and make clear that no country has veto on America's economic and national security. Can't let that happen, ever. After USDA announced a $16 billion package through the Market Facilitation Program, Food Purchase and Distribution Program, and the Agricultural Trade Promotion Program, the Council conveyed its appreciation of the Trump administration for recognizing the economic pressures caused by trade tensions with China and providing the support to assist American farmers. Throughout the year, the Council continued its advocacy and education efforts with congressional members to help build the support necessary to get the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement approved in 2019. The Council conveyed the industry's positions and concerns to congressional members and key government agency officials regarding critical legislative, trade, regulatory, and environmental matters. The Council utilized social media across Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. The posts highlighted news and information from the Council, Cotton Council International, and the U.S. cotton industry. 
The Council continued to participate in farm policy facts whose initiatives are committed to ensuring American agriculture's long-term success by facilitating meaningful conversations with legislators and consumers about how food and fiber is produced. The Council utilized key communications vehicles, such as its Cotton's Week newsletter, radio news lines, columns, videos, and webinars in various trade publications for disseminating key information to its members. Regarding farm law implementation, for example, the Council's educational webinars were highly publicized, and information such as YouTube videos of the presentations were made and posted on the Council's website. Weekly RFD TV segments highlighting important industry issues continued to be produced. Videos, web podcast series, and various Ag Day segments were produced to highlight on news topics. The Council updated its Prevention of Plastic Contamination video. Comprehensive communication support was provided for multiple Council-coordinated Cotton Foundation special projects. Among those programs were Emerging Leaders, Multi-Commodity Education, Policy Education, and Producer Information Exchange. Our land is our biggest asset, so we must take care of it and the resources we use to produce cotton. Without the land and available resources, we would go out of business, and our work in building a business would be lost to our future generations. The NCC launched a pilot program of the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol designed to increase awareness of U.S. cotton producers' responsible farming practices and that they are striving for continuous improvement. The U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol's mission is to be the world leader for sustainable cotton production and has a vision to meet U.S. cotton customers' sustainability goals by validating that U.S. cotton is the most responsibly produced cotton in the world while striving for continuous improvement to reduce its environmental footprint. Recruitment materials were created along with significant development of the protocol's website, www.trustuscotton.org. The Council addressed a wide range of regulatory issues important to the U.S. cotton industry. The Council submitted comments to USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service Agency's Interim Final Rule on Highly Erodible Land and Wetland Conservation and suggested many ways in which the NRCS could clarify the regulations for farmers while more closely aligning their regulation with the statute and congressional intent. The Council also filed documents with EPA on their proposed guidance document for conducting Endangered Species Act biological risk assessments for species potentially affected by pesticides that are under review. The citizens and taxpayers deserve modernization of the Endangered Species Act to reduce ambiguity and to provide meaningful results while maximizing efficient taxpayer expenditures and minimizing harm to individuals, businesses, and local economies. Council staff participated in a Congressional Western Caucus Roundtable discussion that was followed by the unveiling of a draft legislative package comprised of 19 bills intended to modernize the ESA. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the EPA published the Revised Definition of Waters of the United States, or WOTUS, in the Federal Register. After reviewing the document, the Council, joined by 25 affiliated industry groups, submitted comments to EPA and the Corps. The Council continued to engage EPA on crop protection product registrations and other regulatory matters that affect efficient cotton production. The Council filed comments with EPA regarding treated seeds, participated in the comments submitted to EPA from the Pesticide Policy Coalition on this issue, and monitored it throughout 2019. Throughout 2019, the NCC continued to follow developments regarding biotechnology. The Council submitted comments to the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service regarding its latest proposal to revise and reinvigorate the Part 340 rules on the introduction and release of new genetically engineered microorganisms. The Council was active on several fronts throughout the year, addressing issues affecting the timely movement of baled cotton fiber to domestic and foreign customers the acceptance of material used to package U.S. cotton fiber, and the development of new innovative packaging materials and techniques. Continuing its educational activities on lint contamination prevention, the Council strongly urged producers and gin managers to have their entire harvest and ginning crews watch the updated NCC-produced Prevention of Plastic Contamination video. The National Cotton Ginners Association also conveyed this message at its three 2019 Jenner schools. Among new topics that were incorporated into the video were 1. 
what to do with round module wrap rolls once they are empty, and two, synchronizing module truck bed chain speed with the ground when picking up modules. Cotton Council International, or CCI, the National Cotton Council's export promotion arm, continued to position U.S. cotton as the cotton the world trusts and expand foreign demand for U.S. cotton fiber, yarn, and other cotton products. Cotton USA and Oratane signed a partnership to provide industry-leading forensic verification of origin for all U.S. cotton to give brands and retailers the assurance needed to make responsible sourcing and purchasing decisions and provide Cotton USA with a unique selling point in both domestic and export markets. As part of a Cotton USA special trade mission, textile executives representing 20 Indonesian companies gained a deeper understanding of why U.S. cotton is the world's preferred fiber. Likewise, textile manufacturing executives representing 14 countries also traveled throughout the U.S. cotton belt as a part of CCI's biennial orientation tour. As part of its What's New in Cotton initiative, CCI showcased an array of U.S. cotton-rich apparel created with innovative technology and the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol at multiple events in Guatemala, Macau, Cancun, Medellin, and Barcelona to provide regional sourcing assistance to companies looking for U.S. cotton fiber and yarns. CCI's annual cotton days in Korea, Taiwan, China, Japan, and Vietnam gathered representatives from the textile supply chain to increase demand for U.S. cotton through the value-added Cotton USA Global Marketing Program. The Cotton Day events enabled CCI to increase awareness among mills, fabric manufacturers, and brand retailer licensees of 1. Innovations in U.S. cotton, including U.S. cotton-rich garments, and 2. The U.S. cotton industry's production, trade, sustainability, and traceability, as well as the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocols launch. The Cotton Foundation Board of Trustees approved funding for nine general research projects totaling $212,000 for 2019-20. Included are studies related to pest management, sustainability, regulatory issue information gathering, plant protection products re-registration, risk data updating, and education. Through the Foundation, assistance continued for Vital Council communications vehicles, including the Cotton's Week newsletter. In addition, the Foundation support of the Council's web server made it possible for the NCC to continue posting valuable educational materials, including streaming video, for industry members. Several Foundation members also support the NCC-coordinated Beltwide Cotton Conferences and various functions of the NCC's annual meeting. Going forward, there are challenges that we don't even know exist that are going to threaten this organization, threaten this industry. But you've got within this room right here, the leadership and the firepower to deal with it. Looking into 2020 and beyond, many issues, challenges, and opportunities remain. Council staff and leadership will work together to actively manage those issues that face the industry in the months to come. Strong industry participation in the organization and politically active industry leaders will continue to be needed in order to assure future success for U.S. cotton. With the structure in place and the visionary leadership being so willing to assist, the industry is well positioned for the future.